Okay. The sticky part is still dissolving. Um, let's see, Dave, what's going on? You're up in the air in the other arms we are marked too. You're going yeah. mecho e mecho with these dudes. So the people in the chat have been speaking to me, and these voices have been telling me truth. And I'm going to run away. Okay. <laughs> I have a. I was employee of the month. Nay, the year. Yeah, I have a mark too. So I mean, um, let's get out of here. And I book it for the emergency exit now. All right. Uh, so you're going to maneuver to get away from yep. them. Yeah. Full blast. Okay. Uh, you're in a risky position, but this will be standard effect. Actually, this will be desperate effect because they're expecting you to stay in... F no. What I am trying to say with my words that are coming out of my mouth is that this will be risky great effect because they're not expecting you to run when your companions are not able to move. <laughs> Ex uh, that's why I did it, to catch them off guard. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so maneuver risky, uh, desperate great. Yep. <laughs> wow <laughs> i'm outside yeah, and at home in time for dinner double sixes that's a critical king just says i can't even be mad <laughs> <laughs> okay you blast out through the emergency exit it's like one of those perfect high dives that you see at the olympics there's not even <laughs> not even a ripple of of the of the river water gives away it's just a perfect bloop right down through the emergency exit and off you go out into space. Um, yeah, it's, it's a perfect go. And as you are going, here's the critical effect. Lieutenant Virbinus sees the arms weir passing him by and says, no, Imara, I won't let you escape again. And reaches out with his bastion and grabs the arms where Mark II's leg, which also drags him out through the hole too. So he's out there with you. Good, thinking... we saved Lieutenant Venus. Yep. He's out there thinking that you are, for some reason, the famous rival of Seer Easeworthy, Imra Rowe. Why he would be thinking that, who knows? Uh, but yeah, you're out, which leaves the rest of you uh, in a desperate position, basically. <laughs> Sweet. Yep. When you say it that way, it just doesn't sound. The rest of you are ready to have a lot of opportunities to gain experience points. <laughs> so um, Odin sees you leave as well, and she's like, hey, what about all the people still in here? But you're gone before. Come on! And she's trying to uh, run over to help get the goopy stuff off of the other uh, arms you're marked too. And she starts... I it with the thing in my pocket again. She picks up a uh, machine gun and starts firing back at the PBRs to support uh, Macho in in uh, his battle, which is not going well. So, like, one person's probably going to die no matter what. I don't know, maybe. So the goop, the goop is not restraining the gun. We established that, right? Yes. We've also okay, established and... what will happen if you fire this gun in the colony, but that's up to you. Yep. <laughs> and Macho, are they still in a, like, space-proof suit? I think at least the cockpit is. And presume I don't know, does Macho wear a space suit inside the cockpit like sane people do, or...? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pink so muscle shirt. There's yeah, probably... I think I think character. There's enough air in the cockpit to last him a while, but not probably not long enough to get back to the ship. You'd have to come up with another solution. Mm, okay. Does anyone have any better ideas? I mean, if you're going to do what you're going to do, I could probably just maybe fit in the IMAX 7 with Odin. Oh, okay. I don't think that would be the best mech to get into, right? <laughs> Oh, I, no. think you're, I think your odds would be fair. best tripling up in the cockpit of the Mark II. Yeah, but Macho doesn't know that. I think well, uh, still on the radio. 
No, you're outside the colony now, man. All right. <laughs> I think I think Kane's priorities have shifted to him taking care of this mech and taking care of his sister now. And okay. he's mostly concerned with them getting out, so he's gonna take the beam rifle and just aim it at the uh at the Goliaths. Okay. Uh the Goliaths pause. Do you want to do like a a command or a sway on them? Uh live or die, man. <laughs> Sure, we'll try a command first, I guess. Or do you want I to do? Probably help you with command. Do you want to do an engineer or maybe an interface to turn down the intensity of the beam? Yeah, that sounds fancy. Let's. Uh, I'll engineer it so that it's. Um, we'll turn it down and also maybe instead of, because I assume that it's the focus that creates all this damage. So I'm gonna take it and maybe alter the lens shape real quick so that it's more like a cone and disperses the energy, but is more likely to hit all of them. Okay, let's do a risky great engineer on that. Okay. Because uh, dealing with weapon engineering, as I recall, is one of your jams. Pretty risky. Yeah, I mean, you're still in the middle of a firefight. <laughs> oh boy, okay. So the five there, uh, you do it. You alter the lens to make it more of like a beam shotgun, uh, like shorter range, but still enough punch. And uh, let's see, Macho, what are you doing while this is happening? Are you staying in your suit? Or are you going to try and get into the iMac? Or what do you want to do? Or are you still fighting? I mean, that's also an option. I mean, it doesn't sound like a... Uh mech is able to physically continue fighting so i think yeah Majra might be trying to get into the next seven okay uh so odin sees you coming over and thinking oh my ally needs my assistance uh she opens up the cockpit of the imx7 and has its good arm remaining arm reach over towards yours to give you literally a hand to get in <laughs> And she says, hurry up. Those PPRs are still coming. I don't know how much longer um, the arms rear can hold them off. And she's firing the uh, head cannons on the uh, on the iMech at it. The head cannons were also removed in the iMech 10 because they give it a slightly bulkier profile. And the <laughs> iMech 10 wanted to, you know, look sleeker. Also, uh, so the iMech can turn into a cassette. Mm-hmm has a beam saber and a beam rifle and then the mobility thrusters right and no right arm no right arm okay um i don't know do we need a roll for you to get across there that sounds like a prowl to me for macho a, a risky standard prowl to get over there in the middle of a firefight while the other mech that you're trying to board is firing at the incoming uh or at the rather the enemies finally you got a six so uh what does it look like when uh, randall the savage aka macho perfectly gracefully traverses from one mech to another across the open palm of the imex 7 i think due to the stress of having to leave uh leroy jenkins behind macho's gonna psych himself up by snapping into a protein bar. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he does that as he leaps from one to the next. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. What's the uh, it, load it, of a protein bar? Uh, th that just comes with the class. <laughs> In fact, maybe just for the sake of using everything, I also have a stim pack. Maybe he'll just give himself an adrenaline shot while he's snapping into a protein bar with the other. <laughs> it looks uh, like something else. <laughs> okay, you are safely in the IMAX 7. Um, Odin is in the chair. I mean, you can kind of huddle next to the chair or behind the chair or whatever it is you want to do here. And over the other arms we remark to the goopy stuff 
uh, finally finishes dissolving with a little bit of help from bullets of the enemy. Uh, you've got these two machines. What are you, what are you going to do? I mean, I'm going to use my fancy new shotgun laser. Okay. Would... Uh, so that would be a battle, I think, because it's short range. Do I use my battle, or does the arms wear have its own battle? I think the arms wear probably has its own battle. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to alter your vehicle stats here to match those of the arms we were marked to, if that makes sense. And I'll do the same oh, yeah. for, for Dave. Okay. Okay. Oh boy, what did I do here? Okay, one, one, two, one. Okay, now you both got your arms wear stuff there. Uh, we'll take away the busted treads damage on you there. I'm going to reduce your fuel by one because, or by two actually, because they've definitely been, uh, Wendy's definitely been using fuel there mm -hmm. all right there you go so you'd use the okay. battle of the arms remark two there which is two dice nice and is is odin assisting me with this battle uh odin is assisting you but as an npc it doesn't particularly count at this time but Dude, okay. she's 15 yeah if i take the controls on the assist, will that help you would i mean you would have to convince her to give you the controls so like maybe I next... mean right now Macho Man's got half a protein bar in his mouth and a needle sticking out of his sternum. <laughs> I don't think anybody's gonna d disagree with it. <laughs> well, let's see. You get plus one D to command a frightened target, and I think she, the fifteen-year-old girl, uh, who is just now realizing that perhaps she has made a mistake, is scared. So you could roll two dice in command <laughs> and tell her to get the heck out of that chair. Is this risky or desperate? Uh, this is... She's got anger issues, so this is still risky, but it's risky great. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay, so you are able to <clears throat> get her to, like, she looks at you and she's like, okay, okay, okay! And she, like, holds her hands up and unstraps gets out of the seat let you get in um but you uh forget in your haste that you need to readjust the seat again and she's much shorter than you so you uh you bark your shins there <laughs> <laughs> and you take does he doesn't feel it right now he doesn't feel it right now <laughs> but you take the level one oh, feel level one uh, level one pilot harm bark shins happens happens every day when i get into the car Right. So for my battle roll, is that, I assume that's risky? Is it desperate? Uh, I think that it is definitely risky at this point, not desperate, because you've modified the weapon and your companions are all out of danger. So it's, yeah, okay. it's risky standard at this point. Risky great, because you've made it into a spread weapon. Cool. And am I, is Randy able to help me out now? Yep. Randy can help you out by uh, taking a fuel. All right. There has been so much, like, mech go round in this mission. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, right at the start, you're like, do you want to get out of your mechs? And it's like, no. <laughs> yeah. no we do not. <laughs> Instead, we are going to get into each other's and other mechs multiple times over the course of a single mission. <laughs> this won't be confusing for Matt at all. No. Musical mechs. I can simplify it if you'd like. All right. You got yourself, <laughs> you got yourself a four. 
Yeah. Uh, you do it. There's a consequence. A complication occurs. All right. So you just get standard effects. Uh, the blast goes off. You take out uh, one of the PBRs and damage the other two. They are wary of you now. It would be a great time to escape if you wish to. Good. Let's go. Cheese it. Okay. You take advantage of this time and you're able to get out through the exit where you see a uh, discount. You are in the midst of a fist to fist giant robot battle with Lieutenant Venus, who is convinced that you are his uh that you are someone else's old rival, Imra Ro. It's not being very effective because he's still concussed, but he is flailing at you, uh, saying you know, the satrapy will will rise. I will have my revenge for the murder of my father and blah blah. All these really weird things that don't make any sense. All right. It is I not... have several questions about the background of this story for a moment. Sure. Okay. Um, is he the one making sure the terms of our contract are enforced? No, that's the captain of the ship. Okay. Question two. We just have to get back with the Mark IIs, and then that's a great success, right? It is a success, yes. And... So if we got out with just the Mark IIs and all the mechs involved in the altercation, um, you know, were not coming back with us, then that would not make it apparent who was involved in the damage and civilian casualties, correct? Maybe not. I mean, cameras exist, but maybe not. We'd have to do some You're rules right. to find out. Cameras exist, but no uh, no wireless communication, so they can't be watching mm -hmm. them from anywhere, right? No, they right. have to use and laser communications. all of these mechs are powered by, like... Oh, okay. Hmm? All right. Okay, that's those are my questions about the world for now. It's like, there is definitely video evidence of what you did in the port and inside Ooh. the colony somewhere, at least in, like, the right. PBR officers and stuff. But if right, that's not but... your concern... That's fine. Yeah, but like if if the three evil people who attack, you know, if all those mechs were destroyed, they wouldn't be able to pin it on us, or would they? Which three evil people? The Goliaths? No, no, us. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, what's this evil you're talking about? <laughs> well, just I mean, their point of view, right? It's like, we want to make sure... Sorry? They want to make sure... Well, they want to make sure that there were no friendly fire or uh, civilian casualties or collateral damage. Yeah, I mean, I think... I'm wondering if we could retroactively make it look like they were fulfilled if nobody knows who did it. Hmm. They wouldn't know, like, to blame this faction or that faction, right? That is something you could maybe handle through... A downtime action, which is a little should outside just, the scope of this. Leave, uh, all the evidence was destroyed. Leave a <laughs> Neo Zara like badge lying around or something. Yeah, manifesto. You can make that attempt. Sure, you can do a flashback to say that you got that stuff from somebody in Neo Zara or manufactured it, and like leave a calling Ooh. card or some fake fake evidence. Yeah, or I could destroy the evidence as well, right? Yeah. Because cause, <laughs> cause as it stands, I'm in a Mark II. You are. And Kane's in a Mark II. Yeah, he's in a Mark II. Right. And two of our mechs are already destroyed. Mm hmm. And the iMech 7 is the only one, but I have a self destruct trigger for it in my pocket. Yeah, you've got that. Okay. So if I push that. There's no evidence. Yeah, I there's mean, also, theoretically. There's also no Randy. Yeah. Hey, he doesn't know Randy's in there. <laughs> okay. I'm just checking that. When you guys said it, it made me feel guilty all of a sudden. <laughs> but, yeah. Just getting clarity on a couple things. Okay, I'm in a fist fight. Okay. Uh, it's uh, not it's called it's... graffiti that says Tara was here, so... <laughs> It's not really much, like I said, it's it's more of a 
slight annoyance than anything because he doesn't have great control right now and he's basically just floating around and because he doesn't have control he's just he's pinwheeling in space near you muttering at you but uh, that's the scene as the imec 7 and the other arms rear mark 2 make their way out of the emergency exit the other thing that you see uh, beyond that is a fleet of goliath capital ships that has arrived and is beginning to surround the colony so that is the primary concern i think getting through that blockade but it is perhaps not your primary concern as characters or players um and by the way how do we escape this environment i don't know how do you escape the environment well i don't know like do, do we have to go to hyperspace or something like do we need to get in a drop ship uh, you could hijack another one of their ships. You could steal a shuttle. In fact, if you look over uh, to your left a little bit, you see that there is a glorified space bus that is just leaving the colony and seems to be making a run to try and get past the line of um, Goliath capital ships. It's large enough that you could at least hang on to it with your mechs. I mean, we're we're in Goliathy looking vehicles, right? Two of you are in Goliath machines, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, the IMAX Seven was mass produced, so anyone could have one. Oh yeah, it's like a hobby machine at this point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, boy, I wish I picked a character who could lie well. It is also a childhood dream of Randy's to commit Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> All right. Um, while fighting, so Venus's mech is swinging at, you know, swinging wildly at me, right? Yeah. Uh, and he's wearing like a an environment suit inside. Yeah, I mean his his suit is fine. He somehow avoided taking any damage. As if you All were, right, okay. in a previous life, some type of superhumanly skilled pilot, but that's ridiculous. All right. I uh, I, I patch into his uh, radio, and I say... I'm sorry. All right, Seer, let's, let's face off one-on-one, -on -one, as it was always meant to be, hand-to-hand. -hand. Your voice has changed, can... but your determination hasn't. <laughs> All right. I open my cockpit, but I don't get out. <laughs> he, he opens his cockpit, and he has one of those little winged jetpacks, and he flies out towards you uh, in, your, in your cockpit, attempting to enter to have a fist fight with you. Okay, so he now has an empty mech floating in space. Yep. Great, I maneuver to the bus. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> what are the other two of you doing? Oh, I don't have to like roll to get away from him or anything. This is a this is a human in a jetpack trying to catch you in your giant <laughs> robot. Great. <laughs> if you guys get in that mech, I can blow up the IMAX seven and then we're all cool. Well, I was just about to ask. I mean, I know the IMAX seven is damaged, and since Venus didn't really do anything, is his mech intact? Yeah, it's completely intact. It's a very nice. And then you won't have to die red. when I blow up the iMac. I mean, yeah, I think Randy would jump into the one that has the two arms since his greatest failures were caused by losing a punching arm. Mm -hmm. All right, so you hop out of the iMac now. Uh, Odin. <laughs> looks at you and uh she's not wearing a space suit neither is randy they can just hold her breast <laughs> okay you you the pull a you pull a star lord out there the energy shield it had um was waterproof recall so it would keep the air in as well yeah so she won't die of exposure all right so the two of you um make your jump from the imec over to the um whatever red robot this guy had 
and seal yourselves in. Kane, are you okay leaving your old lieutenant behind? No, I think I would just grab him in oh my, my Yeah, we'll just I, grab him. As I okay. jet past. Okay. You oh. grab the guy who is definitely not your old commanding officer, Sir Easworthy. Uh, definitely not. Definitely not. Nothing like him. And but uh, still a good over all a good all around guy. So good all around guy. You Super grab onto the good. grab onto the space bus, and I would hear, also like to add yes that before making the leap, Randy left his grenades and explosives inside the Mech Seven and just Spartan kicked it back towards the entrance. <laughs> sure. All right. Uh, it is floating back towards the emergency entrance slash exit that uh, you opened up earlier, which fortunately I has... shifted my seat and accidentally pushed the button on something in my pocket. <laughs> is it an accident or is it not an accident? I plead the fifth. The IMAX 7 explodes spectacularly, uh, damaging the emergency exit airlock there. Uh, fortunately not blowing a big hole in the colony, but leaving behind enough debris to identify it as an IMAX-7, but not necessarily whose. As the now, what, there are three mechs remaining, the three bastions remaining clamp on to the space bus, you hear a voice coming through because you're connected to it now, so you can hear through the vibrations, saying, who's aboard these bastions? We're trying to make a run through the through the Goliath blockade before they destroy this colony or whatever it is they're going to do. We're not sticking around to find out. Who are you? Hey, who wants to take this one? Randy, you're up. What are the weapons on this red mech? Uh, I mean, he had a machine gun. I don't know if he still has it. And there was a beam saber. I I think I, I will point the machine gun at the bus and fulfill a childhood dream by saying, just shut up and drive. <laughs> I was okay. so certain you were going to jump out of that and hijack the bus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's roll your command. Would you say these folks are frightened? Uh, the captain is not. She seems very steady and very calm and has a voice that's a little bit familiar to Kane, but the rest of the passengers probably are. So yeah, you can have an extra 1D on that. Um, what position and difficulty? Uh, I think you're controlled here and this will be standard. You know what, since this, if I push myself for a pilot action, that's stress, not the machine's yes. fuel, right? Yeah. Since this is a childhood dream, I am going to push myself. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, you okay. got a five. It's controlled position. Uh, so you... Okay, you do it with a minor consequence, minor complication occurs, you have reduced effect, you suffer less harm, you end up in a risky position. All right, a minor complication occurs. Uh, the captain of the bus says, very well, hold on. And then she turns and says, uh, broadcasts to the Goliath blockade using laser communications. Uh, what does she say? All right. He says, this is Captain Radiant Lamech of the Allure. We're going through that blockade and you can try and stop us at your own peril. And what? She, no! She punches it and the bus zooms forward towards the Goliath ships, which open fire, but aren't able to stop. <laughs> at her recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> but they aren't able to stop. Uh, they aren't able to stop the, the rock, as it were. You rocket away from the colony attached to this bus, and you have escaped and technically completed your mission. Woo! So bravo to all of you 
for your surviving of your mission. And this is where we would go into downtime actions if this were not a one shot. But there are some fun things that we can uh, quickly do if you have a few moments. Sure. Yeah. Rest in peace, it's Leroy Jenkins. I'm, uh, I go to the temp agency and collect my pink slip. <laughs> Brock standing there with all my things in a box. Smug look on his face. <laughs> He's like Bill from Office Space. He's just like, if you could get going, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. You should just show up in your giant robot arms wear to collect that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd tell you your last paycheck's in the mail, but I think it's going to get lost. <laughs> All right. So planning the mission, rules of engagement, da, 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 do the mission, and then link to missions. Uh, where's the downtime stuff? Come on. I can never remember where to find that in here, but I'm sure once this has been finalized, we'll be able to jump through with uh, with bookmarks more easily. Squads and factions. Downtime activities. Nope, that's not what I was looking for. There's a series of things that you do at the end of a mission, and I cannot remember where they are. But it does things like determine how your uh, reputation shifts and changes with each faction, depending on who was involved. Like, for example, we can just do this uh, a little bit freeform. Uh, you have pissed off NeoZera by trying to pin this on them. So that would get a negative one tier of status with them. Because they know it wasn't them, and uh, you spoke to two different people in Neozera about your mission, so they're able to put that together with their Aww. brains. Uh, the Terran Randy! <laughs> <laughs> the Temp Pilots Local Union Branch 46, you lose a tier of relationship with them, so you're at negative one. Uh, let's see here. The PBR Ace team were not involved. Lambda Project Security, you are now at negative two with Lambda Project Security because you just stole all their stuff. So Do they, they still exist? No, they're still. I mean, the security group is still there. Yeah, you uh, can tell them we're hiring. What, yeah. what do you need security to guard when they don't have any? Uh, you are at negative three now with the Goliaths, and Good. overall negative one with the Terran hegemony. After that theft, which they can't quite prove, but they're so sure that it happened. Um, Palo Alto Electronics. Uh, they're supplying arms to all sides of this conflict, so they don't really care as long as they get paid. And you get plus one relationship with the scavengers because you left behind a lot of damaged stuff for them to steal and reclaim. <laughs> Woo! You did lose uh, one relationship. So you built a lot of bridges. Yeah, you did lose one more relationship with your bosses, so you're at negative two with the your own faction <laughs> because of uh, completely ignoring the ROE. Okay. I mean, uh, we didn't really ignore it. There were extenuating circumstances. You you, you chose what you chose. <laughs> but we destroyed all the black boxes, though. They can't prove anything. Mm. Okay. How does this... Uh, what ha What's the epilogue for each of your characters? Well, mine was getting the pink slip. Right. You get your pink <laughs> yeah. slip. Do you Calling from accounting, wishing me good luck. Yeah, tearful goodbye. I I guess mine would have to be when Wendy wakes up. What what her uh, her reaction is? Yeah, she's pissed. How does that? Do you do you two ever patch it up? Hmm. Bond over some Jordan Peterson stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. Uh... I think I think when she wakes up, she's like lying on a bed in the room, and uh, Kane's just kind of like sitting there, and they have a tearful sibling moment, mm -hmm. and then uh, then she uh, she probably angrily storms out. I don't know if they see each other again. Maybe that'll be five more years away. Maybe. Okay. Um, Odin comes on, goes on to become the top ace pilot of the anti-Terran hegemony organization. A uh, whole bunch of stuff happens that we may see next year. 
Um, let's see. Captain Radiant Lamech, who was the captain of the bus you escaped on, and previously the captain of the famous Ivory Garrison during the Four Seasons War, uh, joins up with the anti-Terran hegemony organization and becomes the captain of the Omega. And What happened to the existing captain? Oh, he just backs <laughs> off because, you know, that's Radiant Lamech. She's a legend. She was only 19 years old during the Four Season War, and she won the whole darn thing with her tactics. And then they put her on a bus. Because <laughs> she's scary. And what's Macho's epilogue? I was going to say Macho's epilogue was to take Odin under his wing and like turn her into space Furiosa or something. Oh, perfect. Nice. I was thinking maybe you'd get some extra money because if a security camera caught you teen box, as you were perfectly prowling across from mech to mech. <laughs> I mean, there's an endorsement possibility. Yeah. Definitely. No, he's uh, just an influencer. Does commercials for those protein bars and adrenaline shots he snaps into. Uh, Lieutenant Virbinus, uh, over the course of the coming conflict with the Terran hegemony and primarily with the Goliaths, eventually comes to admit that he is, in fact... Brace yourselves. Seer Easeworthy. What? Former ace pilot of the Satrapy of Zera. There I was know. some foreshadowing. I know it's a big shock. It seems unexpected. But if you look back, there were some subtle clues planted throughout the narrative that may have alerted you <laughs> to this revelation. I wasn't ready for that, Matt. And that is the end of this year's installment of Roving Bastion Lambda Armswear. So a huge thank you to our players. Once again, I was joined by Get Daved. If you want to say your farewells, your sign-off. Thanks for watching, everybody. And we're joined by OG Brown Sugar. Thank you for watching, folks. And we were joined by John. Thanks for the awesome game. That was fun. All right, well, I had a good time, and I'm going to stop the local recording of this and put my stream into limbo mode until I begin the next block in a couple of minutes because I need a bit of a break. So thanks, everybody. Similar. I will talk thanks, to you Matt. all again really soon. Fun. Thank thanks you. A lot. <laughs> Bye. Wouldn't have been nearly as fun without all of you and your choices. <laughs> <laughs>